All right, but I want to get into uh, also what took place in Kansas and uh, in Illinois. Tomorrow in Georgia is the big special election in Georgia's 6th District. And Democrats have been coming out for early voting at an unprecedented pace. What is interesting, though, is that According to Nate Cohn, Democrat turnout, Democratic turnout reaching 80 percent of midterm levels in a few prince, uh, precincts near e EV sites. In other words, early voting got to 80 percent of off-year election numbers, even before the vote is held. In Lower DeKalb, it's still in the 20s. In Lower DeKalb County, apparently, there are no or very few and very limited early voting sites. In other words, voter suppression works. <laughs> I mean, it's not surprising. You can make things marginally more difficult that will have big returns in terms of keeping people from voting. Now, with that said, I've, you know, and this is all just sort of anecdotal looking on Twitter, there seems to be a highly motivated group of people in uh, DeKalb County, Democrats, coming out to vote for John Ossoff. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. It really, it's, you know, one of those things is going to come down to turnout. It's going to come down to how many Democrats say we're just going to vote for this. Because, again, this is a what they call a jungle primary, something like uh, 11 people running, um, maybe eight Republicans, three Democrats. If Ossoff gets uh, over 50 percent, he wins. <clears throat> if he's in the top two, it goes to a runoff, which, you know, there's been a narrative that it will be much more difficult for him to win in a runoff. It probably will, but not, not necessarily. But we'll see. But the big story that people uh, were highlighting was, of course, in Kansas, you had um, a special election. This was for Mike Pompeo's seat, right? Was it Pompeo? Yes, yeah, Pompeo, that's right. And Democrat James Thompson held Republican Ron Estes, who was already a uh, twice elected a statewide treasurer, to a seven-point victory in what is an incredibly um, red district that Donald Trump carried by 27 points. That is a 20-point swing from Trump's, the R-plus index, if you measure it by Trump's win. If there was a 20-point swing in every district along those same wides, across the country in 2018, Democrats would elect 112 new people to Congress. Um, that's obviously not going to happen. But you had Republicans dumping in a lot of money late there. Again, Daily Kos seemed to have been the only uh, real funder of this. Uh, the Democrats more or less sat this out. The Bernie Kratz, I mean, the guy himself was a Bernie Krat. But my understanding is that um, Bernie people have taken over the Kansas um, State Democratic Party. They did not offer this guy a tremendous amount of support. Now, they may not have had it, and it may have been too early, but the National Democrats certainly didn't. It was basically Daily Kos, which is another sort of fascinating story of what's going on over there. Um, but now, Daily Kos is turning their attention to the Omaha mayoral race. And I got to credit our caller, Sanjeeva, is it? Sanjeeva from Iowa. From Iowa, who gave us a heads up on both these races weeks ago. Omaha Mayor Gene Stothert 
is getting challenged by a Democrat, Heath Mello, who's a former state senator. In the mayoral primary, Stothert just took 43% to Mello's 41%. For an incumbent, that's pretty bad. Uh, the idea is that if Mello can win this uh, mayor's seat, it will help in the second congressional district, which is um, basically two thirds made up by Omaha. And this is a seat uh, that it's apparently a swing, sort of a purple seat. So uh, if you're in Omaha and you have the opportunity to help out um, Heath Mello, do it. It'll have national implications. If you're in Georgia and have the opportunity to help get out the vote tomorrow, do it. Go to uh, John Ossoff's page. We'll find a link for that and put it up at majority.fm. I'm sure people are already into that. But here's also what's interesting. There was a story about um, a bunch of local elections in Illinois that took place, I guess, about a week and a half ago. And the city of Kanaki elected its first African-American Democratic mayor. West Deerfield Township will be led entirely by Democrats for the first time. Elgin Township voted for a complete changeover, flipping to an all-Democratic board. Normal Township elected a Democratic supervisors and trustees to run its board the first time in more than 100 years that a single Democrat has held a seat. These are all local elections. They're not going imp to implicate national policy, but this is where it starts, is with... Locals taking over their town's apparatus. And this brings you resources and helps when you start talking about statewide elections, when you talk about state senators, when you talk about taking back legislatures, when you talk about congressmen, congresswomen. This is big stuff. It's really important. It's exactly how the crazy people took over. And the thing is, is that we don't have unions anymore, which was the fundamental driver, the biggest apparatus that the left had. And uh, in the absence of those, nothing has come into play. You know, like uh, on the right, they have churches. In some instances... Churches can be powerful in driving the African-American vote. Um, but broadly speaking, the churches work for the Republicans. It's big mega churches. There's also apparently a program that a representative in Illinois, Sherry Bustas, created called Build the Bench. It's an all-day boot camp that offers nuts and bolts details for running a successful campaign. If you are a state rep or a politico in a state across the country, I imagine contacting Representative Sherry Bustos, B-U-S-T-O-S, -S, in Illinois would not be difficult, and getting basically the program. 12 Build the Bench alumni ran for local seats in this election cycle. Eight of them won. A ninth is down by one vote in her race for the Peora City Council. So, I mean, this is doable, folks. It's really doable. I mean, if, you, if you're looking for something to do uh, and a way to get involved, this is a great way to get involved. And for what it's worth, you know, there's and, and if you're in a really like democratic machine state, there's an opportunity to have insurgencies there as well, you know. Great time to take over those things. Um Meanwhile, in the House, over Well over 50% of the caucus now has signed on to and expand the Social Security bill. And we are now up to almost 50% of the Democratic caucus co-sponsoring John Conyers' Medicare for All bill. 
Now he's been spot. He's been introducing this bill, I think, since like since the first term of George Bush, I think it was. And apparently, the highest it's ever reached in terms of co-sponsors of the Democratic caucus was thirty-seven percent. So you have forty-eight percent of the Democratic caucus. There are at least ninety-five co-signers. 93, and the number is growing, and I think part of that is once you've solidified the Affordable Care Act, moving forward in terms of expanding is, is a good thing. Now, this is obviously nothing that's going to be implemented in any time soon, although who knows with Donald Trump, maybe he just decides, eh, okay, whatever. Uh, Bernie Sanders is expected to introduce a a single payer health care. I don't know how different it would be from Medicare from all for all, but uh, another program in the Senate. And it remains to be seen how many co-sponsors he'll have. Uh, but you know it's good seeing the Democrats at least you know put out some type of policy proposals. Does the um, you know, do we have sort of the national Democrats talking about this stuff? Not as much I would like. But this is where it starts. Hopefully these things can be nationalized in some way. Hey, folks, Sam Cedar here. Donald Trump can kiss all of our asses. And one way he can is by you subscribing to this channel. I don't know how that works.